Hi, my name's Mansell Mansell, and yes, that could be my real name. Welcome to Art Launch. This is our first video lecture. Thank you. So what is copyright? Uh, copyright is a negative right, an instant right to prevent the appropriation of work from a creator by another party with the onus placed on the creator to establish said appropriation. So what the f*** does that mean? In English, copyright is granted as soon as an artist or an author creates the work. It is on them to prevent other parties from infringing their copyright and to prove that the other party has copied their work. Copyright law is mostly statute based and for copyright to be earned then it must satisfy section 1 and section 4 of the Copyright Design and Patent Act 1988. As you can see, we've thrown two screenshots of what the Act states. Copyright is only granted under Section 1 subsection A of an artwork if it is an original, if it is an artistic work, and must fall in one of the categories in Section 4. That said, it must be stressed that the courts and legislation are silent on the point of artistic merit of an artwork. The idea of giving copyright through artistic merits has been actively avoided by the courts, especially in Lucas and Ainsworth. What is originality? Originality is seen as a threshold test in which copyright can be given, but it is a very low threshold. Well, photography has been thankfully given the benefit of the doubt, and specifically the courts looked at a photograph or how a photograph was created and stated that the judgment, skill and effort given by the photographer was expressed in how they angle their shot, how they focus the shot, how they work around the lighting of the shot or create the lighting of what they're trying to take a picture of. And they said that that satisfies the originality threshold. What the courts care about is that the artwork is created through some sort of skill and judgment belonging to the creator and is not a slavish or mindless form of copying. But what does that mean in modern day life? Selfies have copyright. Section 4 of the Copyright Patents and Design Act. And that is basically by where the law categorizes what forms of art have copyright or not. What was said earlier in Lucasfilms and Ainsworth by where the courts and the law refuse to mark out an artwork for its merits to grant a copyright. It does so now inadvertently by stating what artworks or what forms of art fall in a particular category. A great example is Merchandise Corporation and Heartbond. This is a particular favourite case of mine. This case involves a 1980s pop star called Adam Ant. Facial makeup was argued to be a form of painting. One of the reasons the case failed is that facial paint does not fall into the traditional view of what is a painting. But also, it, facial paint lacks the permanence of a painting. It only lasts for maybe a few hours. Therefore, copyright could not be given to something that doesn't exist long enough for it to hold on to it. This still shows that the law is passing judgment on art, on art, specifically if it fits in a particular category or not. The issue here is that the law is now inadvertently passing judgment on art, and that is simply because it is stating what forms of art fall into the category stated in section 4. If you're talking about the process in which makes an artwork an artwork, you're still talking about an artwork and you're still passing judgment on it. You might as well talk about the merits of an artwork. I understand one is easy to understand rather than one is less controversial than the other, but the fact that the avant-garde and what is art all about in terms of pushing boundaries and being creative, and that form of creativity and originality sometimes cannot be pigeonholed easily causes quite considerable frustration. A very good example of the law cocking up with art, quite significantly, is in uh, Breville Europe versus Thorn EMI Domestic Appliances, where plaster shapes made to produce die casting moulds for the heating plates of a sandwich tester was seen as sculpture. Wherefore we die. You can't blame the judge, or you can blame the judge, but you either think that he's become too imaginative in, in his approach to see what is sculpture or too literal as sculpture being a three-dimensional form of object and taking everything into it. You in full retard, man. 
Never go for retard. Thankfully, the law has been saved slash clarified in Lucasfilms and Ainsworth. In Lucasfilms and Ainsworth, thankfully they disregarded the Bravel case and they used Justice Justice's man's uh, formulation of what is a sculpture and what is not a sculpture. And this is the type of broad-based thinking that would allow any court or would allow copyrights to exist and shows a consideration of the law and art working together and well. The next issue is, and it's the idea of the expression versus the idea dichotomy, by where, and ironically, the idea of intellectual property is not what creates or gives the protection of intellectual property, but rather it's expressed form. So it's not the idea, it's what has been created that copyright will be attached to. One of the reasons for that is that copyright is a proprietary right, and proprietary rights can only exist on something that is there existing. It can't be ephemeral. It can't be ephemeral. In Design Guild Limited and Russell Williams, it states uh, it's stated by um, Morit, Justice Moritz that copyright subsists not in ideas but in the form in which they are expressed. This will impact, for example, conceptual art or installation art by where it is the concept that is important but not the form in which it is in. So a good example is Duchamp's urinal or Duchamp's fountain by where it's not important in how the artwork is created it, what's important is its intellectual thought process. And the key point with Duchamp's urinal is that it's not about the form in which art exists, but rather its intellectual point behind it. Art has always been, well not recently, but has always been seen as an intellectually heavyweight pursuit. Well, if we look at Duchamp's urinal, the key point about it is that art is not only about form but it's all about its intellectual current or its intellectual ideas. So basically what Duchamp's urinal or fountain wants to stress is firstly it's the choice of object that is a form of creativity itself. Secondly it's the cancellation of the usefulness of a urinal which makes it art and thirdly it's the presentation of an object in a new thought and light. Sadly, this intellectual current or this intellectual basis will not be captured by copyright because it's not, it has not been expressed by him. It's frustrated in terms of its own creation and not having copyright or not being seen as having copyright. Despite the fact that that one piece of artwork has created or has changed the face of, of the art world for generations. It's quite odd that one of the most influential forms of artwork, or one of the most influential pieces of artwork, if created or if produced in, in England, would not, fall, would not hold or have copyright. And this is going to cause a lot of trouble for contemporary artists, especially Tracy Emming. So what is the point of having an idea expressed being so important? Well, one, it's public policy you can lie about. But it's the whole idea that you have to prove what's been created. It's easy to state that I have discovered this, I have made this, but you need to show and prove that you have to lay claim to it. Law and art will always have an uneasy relationship. Reason being is that they're two different creatures or two different fields. Art is something that wants to be original and tries to progress as quickly as it can and it's almost an arms race of ideas. The law isn't. The law is slow. The law is cautious in terms of how it grows and it develops, so not to cause any fuss or not to cause any difficulty in the world it exists in and to make our lives certain as well. So when you have these two almost different fields going at each other or trying to exist with one another, you can clearly see why the idea and expression dichotomy, or the idea and expression issue, causes a bit of frustration. The point of originality causes frustration. The point of categorizing art causes as much frustration as marking out art for its um, artistic merit. Anyway, thank you very much um, 
for listening to our first video cast. Please suggest a picture and a swear word you would like us to use. Please enjoy other parts of YouTube.